Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Lotro with me, Barfelian. So today we are at Fourth Brond, which is the uh, the camp over here in the Heathfells, um, which is on the eastern um, valley way into uh, Dunland proper. Um, so we're going to carry on with, with some landscape questings this time, um, because none of the landscape quests are opened up in Grimbold's camp at the minute, and we don't want to get too far ahead with the epic, since it's going to start taking us towards Nankur and Irnex, the Valley of Saruman. Um, so we just come back here to do some normal quests, so we enter this camp. Uh, there is also a stable master here if you need to unlock them, as well as obviously relic master, forge master, uh, a couple of vendors, you know, all the usual bits and pieces you expect from uh, Little Encampment. So we have uh, loads of the Rohirrim guys around, I don't know why this one's kicking the campfire in frustration, but he is. Um, but again, as we saw in the other camp, we get to see, you know, various bits of uh, Rohirrim uh, emblems and our I'll say architecture, but it's, it's only tents and stuff, but um, you know, they're various little sigils and, and so on and so forth. It's not developed quite as much as it um, does when you start getting into um, Rohan proper, where they diversify a lot of the, um, the look and appearance of the Rohirrim guys. Uh, but it's still cool nonetheless, especially since, you know, back in the day this was our first look at some of the Rohirrim NPCs, so it's pretty cool. Um, so our vector quest that we got earlier on from... Uh, I don't remember, I think it was in the Gravenwood for when we finished questing in there. We've got the Vector quest, bring it of ill news to talk to Arguin in the Isendale, which is this chap here. So let's see what he says. I hope we will find aid in time. You have come from Leofward? This is grim news you bring, but not unexpected. The enemy is already upon us. So there we go, finish that quest. Evil stirs in the shadows, and the horse lords have need of aid. Recently, Cadforn. One of our messengers failed to report back. He is a capable courier that had gone to receive word from Edoras regarding our strategic goals for Fourth Brond. Will you set forth and discover Cadforn's location? Begin your search to the north and slightly west from here along the cliff walls. Surely he has set forth from Edoras already. So, search for the messenger and uh, you can probably guess it's probably not going to go too well for him if he hasn't turned up. Um, and we've got another guy over here. Cadfrith, Rohirrim captain, so he's the guy in charge of this encampment. Hawks in the hey, Heathfells. Friend. May I have a moment of your time? It seems this barren land is twice accursed. Not only have we the Dunlending barbarians ready to fall upon us, but the most recent messenger from the Ford claims he was ambushed and pursued by orcs as he travelled through the Vale east of here. I do not know where they come from, but we have problems enough without those foul curs pouring down from the mountains upon us. See if you can hunt a few of them discover where they are coming from. So we need to kill five orc grunts and four orc guards. And he has a second quest. The Rohirrim are grateful for your aid. Do you hear that howling, Pendulous? Those are the Dunlending's warhounds. They have released entire packs of them into the wild parts of the Heathfells to harry our scouts and messengers. Those beasts are nearly a match for a warg. We have to drive them off, or we will lose precious time in getting the word to the ford and back should the Dunlending's up. Dunlending army begin to move. So we need to defeat five vicious warhounds and four cunning hunting hounds. So take those quests. Um, from what I remember, it can be a bit of a pain to get all the uh, the doggies you need. Uh, but they're generally near the encampment. Over here, slightly north and east in this kind of area is normally a good spot for them. Uh, there we go, we need you. Do we need a Dunlending raider? We don't actually need the Dunlending, we just need orcs. Okay, so we'll kill this guy then. Um, the orcs, I think, are mostly yeah eastwards from where we are. So we are questing east uh, from the encampment, not west. Although we do need the uh, the scout who was coming from Edoras, but somehow ended up west of us. I don't know how that works, but whatever. Um, another warhound. And it seems the other player is also questing around here and killing uh, hounds as well, so we might have a bit of fun with that. We might be stealing some uh, some mobs off of each other. Okay, let's mount up and go find the NPC first then. And see what they're doing. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's kind of a bit weird that it kind of directed us in different uh, locations. I mean, admittedly, we probably could have come here first rather than going straight to Grimbold for the epic. Um, but given that we just did a massive chunk of epic... Oh, I forgot about these goblins. Um, I 
figured we might as well carry on with that first. I couldn't remember if it sent us back to the first camp or not. Um, so, being ambushed, we need um, none of these mobs yet. We will have a quest for the goblins. But I remember these goblins and they're throwing the bombs and they just send you flying. Uh, so it's further south, it's down there. It's uh, in that little valley. There he is. So he has been besieged. Well, hey, that was a good one, wasn't it? Jesus Christ, that's blown me so far. I've broken my legs. Good shot, sir. I will, I will give you credit. I can't let you live for that, though. I'm going to have to still kill you for this, even though I have the utmost respect for how far you made me fly there. That was impressive. Um, so here's Cadform. So he is alive. He just got, you know, attacked, basically. Your aid is welcome, friend. I was unexpectedly attacked by orcs and their ilk. They ambushed my party and stole a satchel that bore important messages for Thorfbrand. Many of my companions fell, and I barely escaped with my life. I was given word to bring to Grimbold and his captains. Theoden King has commanded that the Isengard, uh, that Isengard is to be called friend, and any reports to the contrary should come only from his son, Feardred. So, basically, don't attack Isengard no matter what they do, unless Feardred says. Um, because, you know, <laughs> Saruman's working his fell magic um, and trying to make Rohan not attack him. So this guy has two quests. Hail, friend. May I have a moment of your time? The goblins responsible for the attack on my party were a vicious lot, butchering my slain companions beyond recognition. Besides stealing the pouch we carried our messages in, the foul creatures scavenged, scavenged goods from my companions' corpses as well. Will you seek out the goblins and drive them from this place? And recover my companions' belongings. They have encamped at the mouth of a cave to the north along the ridge. When you have recovered my companions' belongings, you should bring them to Ardwin at Forthbrond. So I need to kill eight goblins, which is the goblins that were just blowing me up with their little bombs. Uh, and three Rohirrim belongings, which should be scattered on the floor near those guys. And a Dunnelling archer has just found me. Go away! Oh, it's going to take too long to bow you to death. Let's just kill you before we get the other quest. Otherwise, we can hear you plinking away the whole time we're talking. Uh, Greetings. If you have a moment, I have need of your assistance. The goblins that attacked my companions and I emerged from a cave to the north of here. We had no warning before they were upon us, and in such numbers that we had no chance. I fear that others will suffer the same fate if the goblins are permitted to retain their hiding hole. If you would, go to their cave and collapse the entrance, then return to Ardwen at Forthbrond and let him know that one threat has been removed. So again, murder, murder, up the hill. Right, so we've got these quests. Let's just run up here. We can gather as many goblins as we like, but every time we pull one, they're going to blow us up and send us flying with a bomb. So, boing. So uphill, that didn't move me much. That one won't move me much. Neither will this one. Oh, okay, it moved me a fair bit. Um, obviously if they knock you off a cliff, that's when the fun starts, as uh, evidenced earlier. So we need to kill these three. The actual um, cave is up this bit here. There we go. So if we come around here, we don't need the Dragloof Warrior or the Archer. Um, and these guys are applying effect on me, which can't be removed, but it's not too bad. Powder burns. A little bit of fire damage every two seconds. So let's kill the ones on this ridge, and then keep going up and up and up. Now that one doesn't actually want to throw bombs at me, he wants to throw little sharp sticks instead. Uh, I'm not sure what's worse. So we kill him, and that takes us up to six. And I'll see there's going to be plenty more around here as well, where the actual cave mouth is. Um, so we only need two more of these and to collapse the entrance. And it doesn't matter which of these two entrances we collapse, both will work. Um, oh Jesus Christ, I've just realised how low these guys have actually made me. Oh, this could be a disaster. It's basically kill or be killed, I can't afford to like <laughs> do anything else apart from murder them so they can't actually do any more DPS to me. There we go. Recovered wisely, there we go. Um, Although those damage ticks are still going to be ticking away, but I should be able to heal out of combat faster than they're actually doing damage to me. Okay, so there we go. We've collapsed the cave entrance. There we go. Dramatic collapsing. Um, now we need 
some belongings. Actually, belongings weren't on the floor. They seem to have been looted just by killing them. Um, I'm thinking of a later follow-up quest then. Um, so we can hand these back in at camp. But on the way back, let's see if we can find a few more dogs and stuff on the floor. Um, so yeah, something else that's been in the news recently, if you haven't already heard, and I'm going to probably do a, a separate video about this at some point soon in the near future. Um, but there is apparently going to be a new Lord of the Rings based MMO that is uh, currently being developed by another company. Um, the, the details are light on the ground, but supposedly it's going to be um, dealing with, event, with events in the run up to the events of the Lord of the Rings. Now, that makes it sound like recent history. Obviously, given that you know Tolkien's world spans thousands of years with all the history he's, he's developed for it. But it sounds like it's going to be recent history, as in immediately predates Lord of the Rings, rather than being Hobbit era, which is about 60 years prior to the Lord of the Rings. Um, or any further back in time, you know, like in the Second Age, that kind of stuff. Um, dealing with, with like the old elves and men of Numenor, Gondolin, that kind of stuff. Um, which is interesting. <laughs> but I don't know how they're going to do really much different wise, story wise. Obviously, uh, this game, The Lord of the Rings Online, can obviously draw on the actual Lord of the Rings storyline. Whereas anything they do on that new MMO is going to predate the main Lord of the Rings storyline, so they can't do that. They're probably going to have things which tie in lore-wise um, to, to the whole Lord of the Rings and, and other potential key events of Middle-earth, depending on what time period it's set in. Um, but yeah, it does remain to be seen what they do and, and when they bring it out, because obviously it's probably going to still be a few years away before they actually have anything to debut. They've just purely announced that they're going to be working on it and haven't actually given us any more details than that. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to do a bit more of a detailed video um, going to some of the technical issues of, of who is doing this game, who do they work for, what company owns them, that kind of stuff. Um, just so we can get a bit more info about, about that news. Um, but it's interesting. I don't think it's going to hurt um, Lotro's kind of audience anyway. I mean, it's fair to say that, that Lotro's player base has probably dwindled over time. Um, I'd say probably certainly since Helm's Deep era. Um, it was probably when the player base started to decline a reasonable amount, but it's it's fairly steady, fairly healthy at the moment. Um, obviously, since um, Turbine basically splintered and sold off the rights to um, a new startup company, Standing Stone Games, which is staffed predominantly by people who used to work for Turbine. Um, but now since Turbine makes mobile games for Warner Brothers Interactive, um, they essentially restructured to become a mobile games developer rather than a you know, Windows games developer. Um, you know, the, the normal guys are working it, they've got a lot more freedom, they don't have to worry about, you know, getting authorization from their you know, bosses and their bosses' bosses and all that kind of stuff. They can kind of have a bit more freedom. And since they've been doing that, um, the game has been a lot more healthier for it. There's, you know, been a lot more interesting stuff going on. Um, there's been a lot more development. They've obviously done the Mordor expansion. Whether you love it or hate it, it's it's still an expansion to the game. Um, that they kind of were avoiding doing expansions because it seemed like the, the, the Warner Brothers and Turbine didn't really want to invest as much into that kind of stuff. For, for serious big chunks of development. Um, but yeah, it remains to be seen. You know, if, if it's any good, I will certainly play it. Um, and hopefully the channel is still going by that point. I might do some uh, Let's Plays on that when it, when it comes out. But um, I imagine that anyone anyone playing Lotro at the minute is still going to be playing Lotro when that comes out. I don't suddenly think that that's going to kill off this game. Uh, it's the same thing when any new game comes out or any new MMO comes out, it, it becomes it's it's the so and so killer. You know, once this comes out, no one's ever going to play the the old game, which is not true. You know, like everything's always every new MMO is always described as like, oh, it's the next World of Warcraft killer. It's never the case. Um, you know, each MMO has has their ups and downs. 
Sometimes they're doing all right. Sometimes they, they drop in players. Sometimes they gain players because they start doing some stuff again. So yeah, it remains to be seen. I see Lotto going on for a good few years yet. Um, hopefully long enough to enable me to catch the Let's Play up to whatever the final content is before the servers get switched off. Uh, that is my overall end goal. But it's going to be hundreds of episodes before we get there. But at least now the content from here to end game is structured. It's a lot more linear. Um, in terms of zones, whereas obviously the, the pre Moria stuff um, was, was kind of like a bit more scattered around. You had multiple zones that you can level in for each level range, whereas post expansion stuff, you normally have the expansion zone and then one um, like free to VIP player zones um, as an alternative level range for at least part, if not wholly, for that level range. Um, Right, so over here then, we have the Orcs. So this is actually really close to Grimbold's encampment, which is down there, um, leading up into this cave over here. Uh, so we need four guards, five grunts. So it seems that guards are in uh, popular supply today. So these are the big chubby Orcs. Um, and then the grunts, I think I saw one walking over there with the skinnier ones. Let's just grab these two boys together just so we can kill these boys in a bit quicker but yeah I'm, I'm gonna watch uh, the development of this new MMO with interest um, but it would certainly be something I'd be interested in playing I should mention as well it is it's meant to be a free to play MMO um, so there's inevitably gonna be some kind of hook for how they're gonna make their money so whether it's gonna be microtransactions um, or some other model, maybe following... Uh, it doesn't sound like it's going to be... I suppose it could be. They haven't necessarily ruled it out. It could be like a, a Guild Wars 2 style model, where you, you pay for the original game, but there's no subscription afterwards. It is completely free to play. Um, although there would be microtransactions. So it remains to be seen what, what their model is. However, obviously they would have designed this from scratch with the idea that it is going to be free to play. Which... Uh, Lord of the Rings Online didn't do because they were originally a subscription model and they only became a subscription model um, shortly after the Mirkwood expansion which is the second expansion um, before that it was um, subscription only um, so they obviously had to adapt from being a subscription model to, to having a free to play model and you know they had to work out okay we, well we can do quest packs um, to, to let people buy the content at their own pace and, and that kind of stuff and you know some people like it some people hate it um, it certainly isn't the worst free-to-play model out there despite the fact that some people will hate it and pretty much try and claim it is um, we still need five grunts there are no grunts at all around here I don't want to be in here I don't think we can go inside to kill them I may be wrong there might also be grunts inside. I'm pretty sure they're all meant to be outside here, though. Um, there we go, there's one. Uh, one or two, there's two there. Okay. So they should all be outside. We'll see. Um, so what was that? The, the Pit of Rift Iron? What is it called? The Pit of Iron, yes. Everyone loved this place. It was... Uh, it's not too bad of a maze, really. Once you realise, it's kind of like a... Almost like a 3x3 three three grid. And once you kind of like get your bearings in the area, it wasn't too bad to understand where you were in that space, but they added a map long afterwards um, to help people out, because they were getting lost in there and getting confused where to find quests and stuff. Um, it makes life a bit easier. Any quality of life. They've, and they've done this quite a lot of times. Uh, but originally, they won't have a map for some places. It could be an interior location map, like a big cave like that. It could be a town map for some of the towns, and they've gone back over time and, you know, put in these maps just as little quality of life things, and you know, it's made the game better for it. Um, so they do listen to player feedback and uh, add stuff in where it's appropriate to do so, and where time and so forth allows. Um, there's only a dog and a guard. This is typical. We're going to be waiting around now for a couple of grunts. Um, and they're all going to respawn as guards, aren't they? 
Let's just check up on the hill. I don't think there will be any more up on the hill. I might be wrong. Um, that's a hound. That's a Dundending Raider. Um, okay, so... Uh, unless they respawn quickly, we're going to have to probably cut away. But it doesn't seem they want to spawn for me. Um, okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll probably wrap up this episode here then, because that's about right for an episode. And uh, I will kill two more grunts off camera. And we will carry on next time. Um, pretty much heading back to 4th Bron for a load of hand-ins. So until then, see you guys later.